going to see my mom. Stay out of my way. Who are you anyway? Who are you? Normally, I wouldn't do a video on a franchise as big as Silent Hill these days. Everything there is to be said about Silent Hill as a series has already been said. But then I heard that Silent Hill 4 was getting a PC port released on GOG, and I realized something. No one ever talks about Silent Hill 4. Everyone talks about Silent Hill 1 because it's the first one. Everyone talks about Silent Hill 2 because it's the most iconic. Everyone talks about Silent Hill 3 because it's an extremely coherent entry to the series and Heather is high-level waifu bait. And everyone talks about the later releases like Homecoming and Downpour because they're bad. But no one ever talks about Silent Hill 4 specifically. So I decided that for this fine Halloween season, I would grab the GOG port and ask the question, how come no one talks about Silent Hill 4? And in the spirit of classic Silent Hill eldritch knowledge, I learned that some questions are best left unasked and unanswered. Because let me tell you, this game is awful, in a way that is genuinely impressive. Typically on this channel, I don't like to review bad games, because they're boring to talk about, and I don't like to go too hard on game developers, because making games is extremely difficult and costly, and it's rare that a project ever really turns out anything like how you wanted it to. However, in this case, the variety of terrible this game manages to be is actually striking. And it was released almost 20 years ago by a massive studio that should have known better, so I don't really need to worry about being too harsh of a critic. And I also suspect that this game as a final product was almost for sure the result of forces beyond the development team's control, which we will talk about after the review. First, let's get something out of the way. If this game is a port, and when you're dealing with a port, there's probably going to be a couple problems, especially with a game this old. In this game, controller support is limited, which for me didn't cause too much of an issue, but for the first person sections, the analog movement was swapped so that up and down on the right stick was left and right, and vice versa, but this was only for the first person sections, which is really weird and caused me to need to swap between a controller and a mouse and keyboard, but didn't really ruin the game. If you're wondering why a mainline Silent Hill entry has first person sections, I'll explain that in a minute. There are also some other problems with the port, but the control issues are the only ones that I found that had a meaningful effect on gameplay. There might be some kind of a fix or a patch for this, but I'm not going to look because my goal is to prevent as many people as possible from experiencing what I had to experience by playing this. So it's a questionable port, but it's possible to have a bad port of a good game. So what exactly is so bad about Silent Hill 4? The short answer is literally everything you can think of. Controls are bad, which creates a cascading effect that makes several other things feel bad. The game looks terrible, even for the time it was released. The writing and character moments are painful to witness. Level design is baffling. Sound design is embarrassingly bad, to the point where everything sounds like a stock sound effect. And finally, generally poor game design stacked on top of an obviously unfinished product. This is a lot of stuff, but don't worry, we're going to go over all of it in detail. And then we are going to try to figure out how the hell this happened. Before we get into specifics, let me just lay out the game's general premise. You play as a guy named Henry, who wakes up one day trapped in his apartment. The door is chained shut, no one outside can hear him yelling for help, he can't break out and no one can break in. His only way in and out of the room is a spooky hole in the wall that opens up in his bathroom that takes him into and out of a Silent Hill style other world. The goal is to navigate the other world and figure out some way to escape from the apartment and the nightmare you seem to be trapped in. This sounds like a great setup for a Silent Hill game for a lot of reasons. Usually in a Silent Hill game, the other world comes and goes out of the player's control. You'll just be minding your own business and then, oh no, everything is all rusty and made of chain link fence. But in Silent Hill 4, the character is willingly diving into the other world because he has no other choice, 
which means that literally the entire game takes place there, giving you complete freedom to really get creative and wild with what the other world is. How does Silent Hill 4 handle this level of absolute creative freedom? Well, if in the depths of your mind among your darkest fears sits normal-looking buildings, normal-looking subway stations, and a nice path through a normal forest, then damn, this hell dimension is for you. This game's level design is extremely boring. Yes, there is one level that gives off Silent Hill vibes, and there are isolated sections within levels that do the same, but in general this game's world really doesn't look or feel all that much like Silent Hill. Normally it would be a hack observation to say that X game doesn't really feel like Y, but it will become relevant in this case later, I promise. Beyond just looking boring in general and generally having boring layouts, basically every world, of which there are six, have something absolutely goddamn infuriating about them. The subway has this frustrating escalator where you sort of just have to wait to be escalated past these really annoying wall enemies. Also, the two platforms you go to in the subway are King Street and Lynch Street. You know, like Stephen King and David Lynch. Normally, this kind of on-the-nose reference would be fine, but this game pissed me off so bad that this realization immediately triggered a primal aggression response in me that I can only describe as getting into a car accident, and then when you get out of your car and say, I'm calling the police, the other guy who just ran into you gets out of his car and says, Hi, calling the police, I'm dad. Just fuck off, dude. The forest world is boring, linear, and forces you to watch the worst cutscene of a man drinking chocolate milk that has ever existed. The water prison has these ramp sections that can kind of just be navigated via ladder to render the entire design pointless, so why did you even design a level like this? And absolutely do not, under any circumstances, pause this video and tell me what the reason is. Because I know what the reason is, I'm just going to talk about the reason in a different part of the video. These videos have a goddamn narrative structure, be patient. The building world, and yes, it is literally called building world, is an annoying labyrinth. The apartment world has a section where you call a phone that is somewhere else in the building, and there's just a ringing phone that you need to search the building for, and it takes minutes. Do you know how annoying the sound of a phone that no one answering is? Let me remind you. Of course no one is on the phone! You're the one who called, you fu- The hospital has this dumbass hallway with haunted wheelchairs and a thousand doors you need to check individually. Man, do you guys remember the iconic Silent Hill hospital-themed enemy? The wheelchair? There is not a single world in this game that is well-designed or doesn't have some annoying flaw. It is terrible from top to bottom. And when I say they look bad for their time, they genuinely do. At first I thought I was insane because I remembered Silent Hill 3 being so much more simultaneously vibrant and dark. So I went back and watched some footage of Silent Hill 3, and I am correct. Silent Hill 3 has great lighting, looks interesting, has a nice, deep, rusty look to the other world sections, and is probably the best looking Silent Hill game ever made. Especially if you're playing the HD version, which I know is controversial, but damn. Compare the deeper, darker colors and harsh lighting of Silent Hill 3 to the blown out, desaturated look of Silent Hill 4. It's not even close. Both of these games were developed by the same team of people, so what's really the excuse for such a stark, visual downgrade in a game that's supposed to be a mainline release in one of your biggest franchises? Now that we have established how ugly and boring the game's world is, let's get into stuff that goes on in the game world, starting with moving around in it. Controls are bad. To be fair, the two main series in the survival horror genre, Resident Evil 
and Silent Hill are kind of infamous for having tank controls, which, depending on who you ask, are bad. But tank controls are sort of an intentionally designed way of moving around the world that is there to increase tension and anxiety, so they might feel weird and unintuitive at first, but the game is designed with this in mind. These games also use fixed camera angles that can feel a little strange if you're used to modern free camera games. Unfortunately, Silent Hill 4 has neither of these things, so it doesn't get the benefit of saying, I learned it from you, Dad. Silent Hill 4 has what would be considered standard third-person controls, but tries to do a halfway point between a free camera and a fixed camera, similar to Silent Hill 3. The problem is, this game's camera angles are fucking insane, and this frequently interferes with the movement controls resulting in you getting awkwardly stuck on corners after weird camera angle flips. And when I say the angles are insane, I mean bonkers. What is this angle? Why would I want to be here? But the bad controls go deeper than just movement and camera movement. Combat is also a complete nightmare. Again, Clunky combat is something to be expected in a game of this genre, but Silent Hill 4 takes it to a new level. Hitting or shooting enemies will sometimes cause them to fall over, and while they are down, you can do a finisher to kill them before they get back up to save time or ammo. Sounds pretty good, but the problem is, when you hold down the button to ready your weapon, you will automatically lock on to whatever enemy is standing near you, and since the button to do a finisher is the same as the button to do an attack, there will be many, many scenarios where you want to finish a downed enemy, but instead are swinging wildly at the air in the vague direction of whatever enemy is still standing. On top of this, the finishers are really inconsistent, and sometimes you need to sit there and finagle your weapon for a second before you can get it to work. It is an absolutely unpolished mess. There are also a lot of weird oddities like pistol rounds hitting multiple enemies at once. It all feels bad. And these types of games don't have a lot of room to have combat that feels bad when survival horror combat is already at a base level, sort of iffy in the first place. To make matters even worse, enemy design is also just generally not good. First of all, the entire art direction and style of the monsters doesn't really match Silent Hill generally, especially the ghost enemies. Silent Hill monster design has a very well-defined set of characteristics. Everything is pale and fleshy and sometimes vaguely sexual. Silent Hill 4 really misses the mark in this regard. The dogs are pretty reasonable to other dog enemies in the series, but most other things just kind of don't seem to match the established direction of the series, and the ones that do just didn't really sell me. Especially the ghosts, which just kind of looked like a bugged character model half the time. There are some areas where they get stuck on the environment and can't even get to you. Just move through the floor! You're a ghost, dumbass! If you're familiar with Silent Hill as a series, take note of the fact that these ghosts in particular are kind of weird and don't fit into the series thematically, because that's going to be important later. There's a lot of odd ghost theming in Silent Hill 4 that was never really present in the previous games, and I'm pretty sure I know why. The third piece of enemy design that is just infuriating are these slugs and these weird worm things that just serve to stand in your way until you bonk them with something to get them to go away. They don't move, they don't attack, and they just serve to waste your fucking time. Speaking of enemies functioning poorly in the context of game design, I have more examples of that. Every enemy attack in this game does the same or almost the same amount of damage. This means that there is never, ever a time where you see an enemy and go, oh no, that's a big boy. This is a horror game, and there is never an enemy that feels scary, because there is never an enemy that is even remotely threatening or intimidating. And enemies don't even really feel like they have more or less health than any other enemy, because the answer is always the same. Bonk it, which usually stun locks it, then step on it. Or if you're in one of the few sections where the developers ran out of ideas and just copy-pasted seven enemies into the same area, unload on them with your gun. 
I've talked a lot in my previous videos about the need to find a balance between being helpless and being able to fight in a horror game, and Silent Hill 4 doesn't even come close to that balance. Every enemy in the game is so easy to just knock over with melee attacks that you will be swimming in ammo for the roughly three times in the game when you will actually need it. There is almost never a threat of failure, and almost never a threat of running out of resources. The big intimidating guy that is supposed to be this game's version of Pyramid Head is literally just a dude in a trench coat with a gun. Now I know, I know that one of you smartasses in the comment section is going to stop this video, push up your glasses, and start typing out, Um, well actually Jacob, you see, the humid and the gun are truly the most terrifying thing in this world because of the inherent evil of man and his dark desires with a tool designed only to kill and just shut the fuck up. The entire point of Silent Hill is that the monsters are symbols and reflections of that kind of thing. You don't literally just make an enemy, a guy with a gun. You make a big fucking dude with a big fucking knife who is supposed to be a symbol of the worst parts of being human. You are in what essentially amounts to a hell world with hell demons that are ironic reflections of the real world. This is like storytelling 101, and Team Silent knows this better than anyone. They proved it by making Silent Hill one of the most narratively and thematically perfect games of all time, which is why it's so baffling that these mistakes were made. So we've talked about how the game looks and feels bad, but let's talk about how it sounds. It might not surprise you to learn that it sounds terrible. What is this noise? Silent Hill as a series is known for its iconic music, composed by Akira Yamaoka, which is generally considered to be real good. They even got him for the movie. He's a composer on Silent Hill 4, but I don't know what the hell he was composing, because the only music I remember is the title screen theme, and some music in like, two cutscenes? I mean, the OST has 22 tracks on it. Did I just have like, some sort of specific auditory blackout while playing it? Are there tracks missing on the port? Maybe I am trapped in my own hellish pocket dimension, and certain vibrations can't penetrate, but I don't remember this game having music. Oh, most of the OST isn't actually in the game? Great, let's move on. The sounds that the enemies make all sound very clearly like lazy stock sound effects, and most of them don't even really make sense. The dog enemies use a stock big cat noise. The chimp enemies use a stock chimp noise, but also recycle the same big cat noise and use a stock bear noise. <laughs> then the patient enemies use a very good royalty-free sound effect that needs to be heard to be believed. I literally found a sound almost exactly like this on free sounds. You also probably noticed that in these clips, the melee weapons don't have impact sounds, which is an interesting choice. I guess now would be a good time to mention that the animations are also extremely bad. I mean, this is the most embarrassing example, but I'll point out a couple more as we go on, and you'll probably be able to spot some goofy examples just looking at the footage I'm playing. So, the game looks, sounds, and feels like an intentional, personal insult to the player. But that's only the first half. The second half is worse than you can possibly imagine. The first half of the game progresses something along these lines. Your apartment is your hub world, and it's also where the game has a first-person perspective. You enter the hole in the bathroom to go into the other world. You enter the hole in the other world to go back to your apartment, where you heal over time, have access to your item chest, and can save the game. Okay, cool. Every time you complete a world, you are sent back to your room, you get some story progression, and then you go back into the hole and do the next level. Great. Now, at the halfway point, you save your neighbor from the other world, 
try to take her back through the hole, only to realize that she can't pass through the holes like you, and you will need to find some other way to save her. And that other way is, and I am not fucking kidding, escorting her through the five levels that you just finished, doing them all over again with very little changes. This isn't just an escort mission, it's the worst imaginable escort mission. Obviously we already have the Sisyphusian task of doing the exact same thing you did but worse, so I don't need to draw much attention to that. But Eileen is just the worst. First of all, she's all busted and fucked up from her hospital visit, so she moves very slowly, and will not follow you into another room unless she's right next to the door. If she takes enough damage, which she absolutely will, you will notice she gets all weird and gooey. This indicates how possessed she is. You can't reverse this, and if she is possessed, she will randomly just sit in place and freak out for a minute, and you have to just stand there and watch before you can continue. Eileen also can't climb ladders, and that is why this stupid ass level is designed with ramps and ladders, because when you come back with Eileen, guess who has to walk all the way down the ramp, and guess which camera angle is still there. There was also a lot of needing to clear out enemies to make sure you can move her through a room, which means that in a game that is usually about being scared of the monsters, you instead need to clock in for a 9 to 5 shift as an otherworld exterminator and clean out all the hummingbirds and chimp people so Eileen doesn't slip on a banana peel and waste everyone's fucking time. Literally everything that was annoying about playing through these levels the first time is amplified by playing through them again with an escort. If I was the lead designer on this game, and you were on my team and suggested the second half of this game be this, I would have picked you up over my head and thrown you out the window like the comedian. There is no way anyone would design a game like this unless they were extremely inexperienced or forced to by circumstance. And we all know that Team Silent isn't inexperienced, but we'll get to that soon. Okay, let's take a break from being unreasonably mad at a video game and talk about the apartment room. In the apartment, there are a few things you can do. In the first half of the game, things you can do are as follows. You can look out your window to see if your neighbors are up to anything. You can look through the hole in the wall and spy on Eileen like a weirdo, don't think I didn't notice the tissues right next to the hole. And you can look through the peephole in the door to see if anything is going on out in the hallway. Uh, don't worry about it too much. There are a lot of strange things in this world. umbilical cord I keep in a box in my room. Lately it started to smell terrible. Now if you're smart you might already see where this is going. The idea is every time you get back from the other world you can check all three of these and get extra details about the world, the story, or maybe get a little spook. And mostly, you're correct, but these mechanics are massively underutilized. In the entire playthrough, there are only a couple times where looking through these three points is relevant, and only like once where it's a scare. So this is generally just a missed opportunity. And now I get to move on to the fourth thing you can do in your apartment, which starts happening once you reach the escort mission half of the game, cleansing hauntings. Sometimes when you return from the other world, some ghost shit will be going on in your apartment, and you'll need to cleanse it with one of these candles. Now, this ghost shit isn't just for show, and if you stand next to a haunted section of the apartment for long enough, it will kill you. So they are annoying, and getting rid of them also affects the ending you get, so you generally want to do it as much as possible. The problem is, you need to place these stupid candles in the right location, otherwise you will waste them. I burned like three candles on the table in the center of the room trying to cleanse this window haunting before I realized, oops, I guess I need to burn them on the other table one foot away for no reason. Even if you know what to do, it's still possible to waste candles. Let's say for example, you have a ghost coming out of the wall in your bedroom, and you would like to stop that from happening. Well, the only flat surface in this room you could put a candle on is the desk, so you burn it and you stand there like a moron for a full minute watching it burn, and realize, well, dang, it looks like that wasn't where I was supposed to put the candle. 
Also, you can use these charms to cleanse the apartment if you want. The game gives you plenty of extra charms and candles, so if you waste some, I'm not sure how big of a deal it is, but it's still very annoying and you feel like you're being scammed. Another small annoyance with how this room works is for the first half of the game it regenerates your health, and for the second half, once the apartment starts to become haunted, the health regen stops. The game gives you more health items to try and compensate for this, but you could still in theory end up in a situation where you have no healing items and you're totally fucked. Under normal circumstances, this would be fine. A lot of survival horror games are like this. That's why they are called survival horror. If you run out of herbs in Resident Evil 2 and softlock yourself, that's you not surviving. The entire game is set up like this. The problem with Silent Hill 4 is, the game does the old switcheroo on you halfway through, and now you need to just adjust your entire playstyle to a totally new set of rules where healing items actually matter. To make things even more annoying, if you catch yourself low on health and low on healing items, the room will just spawn a medkit completely invalidating its own design choices. This is so obviously a case of the developers just not being able to make up their mind on how they wanted the room to function, playtesters complaining, and the developers just throwing up their hands and taking the lazy way out instead of actually needing to design the game in a way that was reasonable or consistent. If you've played a lot of Silent Hill games, you're probably starting to realize how strange this game's ghost theme is. The ghost enemies are odd in the context of Silent Hill, and all the spiritual stuff involving cleansing hauntings is also odd. Almost like there are two games going on at the same time here. A ghost hunting game and a Silent Hill game. Well, let me tell you right now, that's exactly what is happening, because this game was never intended to be a Silent Hill game in the first place, which goes a long way to explaining what an absolute piece of trash it is, as well as why I said earlier that it doesn't really feel like Silent Hill. I should say for the sake of transparency that the theory that this game was not originally planned to be a Silent Hill game is a little bit controversial, but you can find evidence on the internet that seems to back it up, and the game's general design seems to be pretty telling. And the worst part is, this ghost game sounds like it could have been an amazing horror game. Going into a ghost dimension, and having to fight off spirits, and then coming back to your apartment, and having to solve puzzles, and do rituals to cleanse it to make sure the ghosts can't come back to your world for revenge, that sounds awesome. And some of the haunts in this game are great. For example, there's a part where, while you are in the other world, you find a dead cat in a refrigerator. Then, way later, you come back into your apartment, and you hear meowing, and immediately know what the fuck is up. This stuff is cool. The game's entire plot also clearly enables this idea. Silent Hill 4 is about a crazy serial killer killing people that come back as ghosts. At the start of the game, they mention that before he died, the killer killed 10 people. Now if you're paying attention, you'll realize there are 10 victims and 5 levels that repeat twice. Hmm, it's almost like there was an idea here that wasn't able to be completely executed and this game is blatantly unfinished. There are also some ghost hunting mechanics in the other world. You can't kill the ghosts, obviously, because they're ghosts, but you can weaken them and pin them to the ground with these swords that will hold them in place and keep you from being harassed by them later in the game. I'm guessing the original idea was that specific ghosts would haunt you and you'd need to go into the ghost world and pin them down to stop them from coming through into your room or something. The skeletal remains of this really great sounding ghost game can be seen all over Silent Hill 4, and it's so obvious that there is a good idea that got trapped in a bad game. I did a little bit of research, and I'm pretty sure I know how this happened, but let's wrap up the review of the actual game by going into the story first. The story sucks. This is a basic overview. Henry's apartment is getting spooked because room 302, the one he lives in, is the room that the serial killer was abandoned in as a child. The killer, named Walter, goes insane, thinks the room is his mother, and starts doing some weird Silent Hill cult shit to make his mom real by killing 21 people in the name of some ritual. 
He gets arrested, commits suicide in prison, but wouldn't you know it, the dang killings keep happening after he's dead. Whoa, crazy. It's up to Henry to stop Walter from completing the ritual and turning his apartment into a MILF or something. Okay, so now we can see that it makes sense that spirits would be haunting Henry's apartment, especially if they were victims of the killer that was born here. More evidence of the ghost game that never got developed. Anyway, you progress through the other worlds, meeting characters that don't matter, not giving a shit when they die because they aren't developed, until you meet Eileen, who you were supposed to care about for some reason. It's written terribly, it's paced terribly, and all of the dramatic moments range from bad to offensively annoying. Let's back all that up with an example. The first time you enter the other world, you meet this lady. Who are you? What's your name? Henry. And you? <laughs> this is my dream, and you don't even know my name. It's Cynthia. Your dream. That's right. <laughs> this is just a dream. And a really terrible one, too. I hope I wake up soon. So you think this is a dream, huh? Well, if it's not a dream, what is it? Anyway, I want to get out of here, but I can't find the exit. Say, will you help me find it? I'm kind of scared all alone. I'll do a special favor for you later. <laughs> It's just a dream, so I might as well have some fun. After you escape the other world for the first time, she calls you on your phone and says this. Where did you go? Hurry, save me! If you need a token, there's one here! Then you go back and try to save her find a spooky mannequin version of her in the bathroom, which is one of the only cool scenes in this game. Then you just find her dying on the ground a few minutes later, and this extremely goofy cutscene plays. Are you okay? <sighs> dream, right? Oh, I think I drank too much last night. Oh, I never got to do that special favor for you. Oh, I, I feel like I'm dying. The frustrating thing about this is that it was almost good. If Cynthia's character would have been developed over the course of like a few hours and we would have got to see a relationship develop between her and Henry trying to escape, then maybe her death would have actually been upsetting or had some kind of an impact. Instead, all we get is she randomly shows up, threatens to suck you off for what we can assume is just having an awesome walk cycle, and then it disappears and dies, all in the span of like 15 minutes. She's never developed to the point where anyone actually following the story would give a shit about her at all, and every single character in the entire game is like this, even Eileen. You find Eileen in the other world, save her from the hospital, and then risk your life backtracking through hell to get her out. Why? I think the developers thought that since gamers are all sex fiends, that they would get emotionally attached to Eileen by spying on her through the wall, and the thing is, that's a pretty good idea. If this would have been a film instead of a game, we can imagine, easily, a guy being trapped in his apartment for months, haunted by ghosts, falling in love with the only woman he can see. But the game isn't that. We see her a couple times, 
and there isn't even an established previous relationship, the two of them just vaguely recognize each other as neighbors. And this is something that other games have done well. Compare the dramatic Cynthia death I just showed you to a similar cutscene in Silent Hill 3. You're late. Are you hurt? I can't move my right leg. It's broken. I'll call an ambulance. What? I don't think we'll come. Don't worry. I'm used to it. You... You old fool! Getting yourself hurt like that? Sorry. Why did you have to do that for me? What'll I do if you die? What'll we do if this god thing gets born? <laughs> Come on. How powerful could a god from a dump like this be? I'm sure it'll be no big deal. Yeah, but anyway, something's gonna happen. Uh, who knows? Maybe we'd all be better off if it did. But if this is how I got a mercy axe, I don't want to see any more of it. That's a pretty good reason to risk my life, don't you think? Plus, I'm just an old fool, right? You think you're Superman or something? You know, I always wanted to be him. Besides, yeah. I want to help you out. You don't have to feel responsible. I know it's not your fault. You, you remind me of my son. You said nobody was going to cry for you. Dead people don't cry. Stupid kid got himself shot robbing his bank. Pop was a penniless good for nothing. Who knows? Anyway, now I guess I'll never find out. <sighs> Sorry. I shouldn't have said you reminded me of a guy like that. <laughs> well, maybe if you had compared me to your daughter. <laughs> Listen. I'll take care of the rest. You stay here and I'll be back when it's over. You'll be okay by yourself. Hey, no problem. <sighs> Besides, my dad's not around anymore. So only I can do this. In Silent Hill 3, the detective character is actually a developed character, and the dialogue is kind of good, and the general tone is sold so much more effectively. This is so much better than a girl's last words being, dang, I really wanted to jack you off, Henry. Just as an aside, I also feel like this game tried really hard to shoehorn in the vague sexuality that has been present in previous Silent Hill games, most notoriously Silent Hill 2. First off, Cynthia is obviously a sexual predator, and then you've got the peephole next to the tissue, which I'm sure wasn't an accident, and you've got various random scenes that seem to be semi-sexualized. I'm not sure why this is. Were they trying to make some sort of point about Henry being trapped in a room? Did they just think, oh, this is part of the brand now? 
I have no idea, but it sucks and it doesn't land. Silent Hill 2 has these kinds of themes because James is struggling with the guilt of being sexually frustrated while his wife is in the hospital and he has to grapple with how selfish and shitty that makes him feel. Henry is just locked in his room. Walter is also just a bullshit villain. Silent Hill 2, which is widely considered to be the game that really set the tone for the series, features an extremely personal story of James trying to get over the loss of his wife. The monsters are a manifestation of his anxieties surrounding this, and the last boss is literally the memory of his dying wife made manifest into a demon. The game's villain is James's own inner struggle made real, the same way that you can argue the first game's villain is Alessa's inner struggle creating the other world in the first place. Silent Hill 4's villain is a loser that thinks his mom is a couch and dresses like a school shooter. Why would anyone ever think this has more or the same level of impact as a character going on intense journeys through their own personal hell? Alright, let's end the review section of this video the same way this game ends, with an aggressively terrible boss fight. The game ends with you fighting Walter in this room, and I don't care if this is a spoiler. As far as I'm concerned, if I spoil this game for you and you don't play it, I'm doing you a favor. The first thing I notice about this fight is that the big spinning thing in the middle of the room is a hilariously blatant ripoff of the black hole drive from Event Horizon. The second thing I realized is that whoever designed this encounter probably had five minutes to do it. First, while you fight, Eileen is walking into the Event Horizon machine and getting closer and closer to dying. Under normal circumstances, Eileen dying would be a blessing, but for some insane reason, the developers do this thing where the camera will just randomly jump cut to Eileen's progress during the fight. This is actual footage, I am not editing this. Apparently, the more possessed Eileen is, the faster she walks to her death, and in my playthrough, I'm fairly sure she was so possessed that it would have been literally impossible for me to kill this boss before she died. Personally, I'm glad she's dead, but I can imagine this being really annoying for someone trying to get the good ending where she lives once they find out last minute that their run is essentially dead. After Eileen is gone and you stop getting spammed with jump cuts, you need to use an item on the big guy, then collect spears around the room and stab the big guy, which weakens Walter, and then you have an intense Tarantino-style gunfight with him. All of this is whatever, but I want to draw your attention to how poorly this entire thing plays out. Look at how bad Walter's teleport animation is. Look at how often he just attacks the air and doesn't hit you. Look at how busted this looks. It literally looks like a prototype. The frustrating part about all of this is there are some good moments in Silent Hill 4. Every once in a while you catch a glimpse of how good the game almost was. There's an easter egg where you can see a phone number outside your window, and when you call it, this happens. There are little set pieces here and there that are amazing. And there's this moment when you're searching a hospital for Eileen, which is by far the best moment in the entire game. But in the end, the game just doesn't work on any level. That's all I think I want to say for the review section of this video. Silent Hill 4 is bad. Very bad. It feels lazy, unambitious, and unfinished, and this game gave me real, genuine headaches to try to finish. I do not recommend this game. I had more fun playing Silent Hill Homecoming, which is probably going to be fighting words for some people out there that insist on defending this game. Because one of the things I found out trying to gauge the public's general opinion on Silent Hill 4 is that the discourse surrounding it is fucking unreal.
I think Silent Hill 4 is one of the worst survival horror games I have ever played. I want to read your reasons for liking it. Anyone care to help me out? Okay, that sounds pretty reasonable. Let's see what we've got here. I think there's something to be said for the idea that games don't need to be fun in order to be interesting. Silent Hill 4 is not fun. It's claustrophobic, stressful, and frustrating. All of this is by design. You see, the people who made this game aren't stupid. These are the same people who made Silent Hill 2 and 3, so of course they know what they're doing, right? Why would they make us go through the levels again with an escort mission with more ghosts and no safe haven? Is this game poorly designed, or is it just the pinnacle of video game art? I think both. What does this even mean? What do you mean? No one thinks Silent Hill 4 is the pinnacle of anything. This is what I like to call the cube world defense. It's the idea that if a game made by good designers is so eldritchly bad, it must have been on purpose. It must have been art. How could these geniuses do this to me knowingly? The reality is that people just fuck up sometimes. Even very smart and talented people. Einstein thought we would never observe a black hole. Oops. I see Silent Hill 4 as an experiment in eliminating ludonarrative dissonance by using mechanics to make you feel exactly what your character is supposed to feel, and in doing so, encouraging you to act the way your character would. The ludonarrative dissonance argument is how someone with a college degree writes the cube world events. Games need to be engaging to play. If I feel depressed playing whatever piece of shit you just made, you have failed. You can make a game that makes me think about what it's like to feel depressed, or think about what it's like for other people to be depressed, but your goal should not under any circumstances be to depress me specifically. I've read many arguments defending games that aren't fun as actually being masterpieces of art. One of the most common ones is Pathologic. Pathologic isn't a game that was designed to be not fun. It's a game that is designed by Russians. Pathologic is just how Russians make games. Russians think this is fun. They wouldn't have made it otherwise. Have you seen the books these people write? Also, the term ludonarrative dissonance wasn't even coined and popularized until five years after this game's release, so I have a really hard time believing that this was on the dev team's mind. Silent Hill 4 is the only game that requires you to understand it at a conceptual level in order for it to fully work. The others can be enjoyable games without having to think too hard, although they benefit from it, of course. I've written a lot about the game, and regardless of the intention, it definitely forces you to consider its philosophy more than other games. It contains a lot of references to films about the process of voyeurism, including Rear Window, a film as a voyeuristic medium. It contains a literal panopticon, which is a pretty a direct reference to the concept Rick and Morty. of panopticon the humor is extremely subtle, and the without a solid grasp of theoretical physics, of most of the jokes will go nice over a typical the viewer's head. The there is also Rick nihilistic outlook, which is deftly woven into his characterization. His okay, so this game is bad, and the people that like it are wrong, but we still have one question left to answer. How? How did this happen? Why did Konami release a clearly terrible title as a mainline game in one of their most beloved franchises? Well, after some research, I have a theory. We know that Silent Hill 4 was being developed at the same time as Silent Hill 3. And we know that it was supposed to be a total shakeup of the series, and we can be reasonably sure that it was most likely not intended to be a Silent Hill entry in the first place. Given this information, I think development on Silent Hill probably went something like this. They came up with an outline for a ghost game that would have first person sections or be entirely in first person, probably inspired by Fatal Frame which came out a couple years earlier. As the development on this new concept went forward, someone at some point said, well, let's just slap Silent Hill on the front so it'll sell more. And the result of that decision was Team Silent having to merge their idea for a ghost game with what people would expect out of a Silent Hill game. Silent Hill 4 is essentially two halves of two different games smashed together into one disappointing experience. This just goes to back up one of my golden rules for game design. If you have to choose between two different options, it's always better to commit to one or the other rather than half-assing both. 
And to be clear, I'm not blaming the development team for this. If you do any kind of research on how game design usually shakes out in the professional world, these kinds of choices are usually made by publishers or executives that need to force the developers to cooperate with budgets and the profit margins. I have a difficult time believing that Team Silent would have released this as a finished product unless some kind of pressure was being applied to them. But like I said earlier, even smart and talented people make mistakes. Finally, I'll let Henry himself give you the only inclusion anyone can come to on this game. If you want to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing. You should also follow me on Twitter so you don't miss any important updates. You can also find a link to join my Discord community down in the description. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.